Hey everybody and welcome to Quickies. If you've got a Behringer XR18 mixer and you've been wondering how you can interface it with Logic Pro on your iPad so that you can have a mobile system for multi-track recording, well, I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. Let's go. So obviously the first important step is connecting your XR18 to your iPad. So what you're going to need is a cable. This is a USB type B and it depends what iPad you have. The one I'm using is a lightning connector, but if you have one that's USB type C, then that's what you need. So let's just close this for a second. I'm going to grab the other phone here and just show you the connection. So the type B goes in there and then the other end goes into your iPad. Okay, before we get started with the Logic or even looking at the XR Edit app on the iPad, there's something you need to check in the settings for your XR Mixer. And unfortunately, you can't make this change in the iPad version of the software. I don't know why, but you can't. So what you need to do is load up the XR software on your PC or your Mac. You can find that available here. Once you've got it downloaded and installed, you need to connect and then you need to come up to your setup tab. And under the audio MIDI tab, you need to check your USB interface. And if it's not set to 18 by 18, if it's set to two channel, then you're gonna to wanna to set it to 18 by 18. This gives you full send and receive of all your USB sends and returns from the mixer to your iPad and from your iPad back to the mixer. So make sure you've done that. The very next step is that you obviously have to have Logic Pro installed. If you don't have that, please go grab it and then come on back. With Logic Pro installed, we're going to open the software. And you don't need any sort of software installed to make this work. The XR18 just does, it just works as soon as you plug it into your iPad. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new project. Oops, let me go back. Let me just show you what I'm doing here. Let's click on create a new project and I'm gonna choose tracks. And we're gonna choose audio. And so essentially that's a lot of the hard work done already. I'm gonna close that little window. So what we need to do really quickly is come up to our settings. Before we do anything else, go into settings. And we're gonna click on the audio tab and you can have it auto selected for your audio devices if you want to, but if you might change things around, just leave it off. And what you wanna make sure is that your input is set to your XR18 and that your stereo output is set to your XR18. Now this one actually gives you channels. So if I click on this, you can see that it's currently set to 1718 and we'll touch on that after. But the key thing here is that your input and your output are both on XR18. So we can close this window. And now what we wanna do is add channels. So let's click on this. And this brings us back to this window here. Now, number of tracks, this is important. We've already got one, I'm gonna add seven more. So we have a total, oops, a total of eight. It's not letting me input it, so I'm just gonna do this. That's not a problem with Logic. That's this little keyboard I'm using so that you can track my movements. Okay. So we're set for that, click done. And then we wanna come up here to audio again, but we wanna click on the little menu icon here. So format, mono or stereo. If you have it set to stereo, if you wanna use stereo tracks, then you'll see that your channel input numbers are combined into groupings. Channel one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and so on. I'm not using stereo tracks, so I'm gonna set this to mono. And then of course that will give me choices that are individual numbers. So input one is gonna be one, input two is gonna be two. And then what we need to do is make sure that ascending is clicked. You don't have to do this, but to make your life easier, turn it on. So what this does is when you create multiple tracks, it will auto patch them in an ascending order, meaning the first track will be number one, the second track will be patched input number two, and it will ascend that way, one, two, three, four, up and up and up for however many channels you have. 
default audio patch, you're not going to want to touch this unless you have a reason to. And input monitoring, you can turn this on here if you want to, but you can turn it on in the mix once you're in there as well. But what this does is allow you to hear signal coming through the channels. And I'm going to turn it on just so you can see. Once we've got that set, we're going to hit create. And there we go. Now you may have heard it. There's a little bit of noise coming through my speakers. That's because I turned input monitoring on already. So let's close this again and let's just open up this. So you can see this is input monitoring. I can turn it off now and you may have heard the little bit of air disappear. Turn it back on, a little bit of air is there. So I know that sound signal is traveling through my system correctly. Now I'm going to just show you what I've already got going on here. So let me jump over to my other computer. I have a multi-track mix running, so we're going to play that. You can see, you can hear it from my speakers. You can see that I've got signal and you can see that I'm controlling the output levels of my speakers right here in Logic. So let's talk about how I'm doing that. This is where we come back to that other setting. So let's go to settings and to audio and this is stereo output 1718. So I'm gonna grab my other camera here really quickly and I'm gonna show you I have eight channels coming in for multi-track and then I have outputs for my speakers patched. I had one in aux there for a test, but I'm going to patch it back into the main left right. So that will give me eight channels in and my two main channels out. So whenever you have a multi-track set up like this, what we're doing is we're taking eight channels, bringing it into the system, and then the system is kicking all that out on USB into Logic in your iPad. So at that point, you need to send that information back to the mixer so you can bring it out on your speakers. You don't have control directly from Logic with the physical outputs. You have to first send the information back into the mixer. So we're choosing a stereo output and we're choosing 1718. You can make it any choice here. I'm choosing 1718 because it's at the end of the chain and I'm not using those. But what we're telling it is anything we mix in here is now gonna come out channel 1718. It's gonna come out USB and it's gonna go back into the mixer and then it's gonna show up on USB return 1718. So first thing in the software we're gonna to wanna to do is go to the routing tab and then we want to go to the main outputs tab. There's two ways you can do this and I'm going to show you the first way. The first way is just to leave it patched normally, left right. Okay, if you leave it patched left right, then as soon as you send signal back here, you'll see it show up and you'll have to raise this fader and then you'll have to raise your, oops, that's the bus, you'll have to raise your main fader. The next thing we need to do is come to this channel and we want to select this if it has not already been done. You have a choice of line in and USB. Line in is the physical inputs for 1718 and USB is the return from logic to the machine. So we've set it to 1718 and now anything we bring back from logic is going to show up right here. So you have to do that to get signal to come out of your speakers. If you do not want to have to be bothered with the XR Edit software at all, you want to just use Logic to control your inputs and outputs, then what you're gonna do is you're gonna change this left right to be patched to whatever stereo pair you've chosen. Remember, I chose 17 and 18, so I've done that. Now, these faders here no longer matter. They don't do anything. Now that I've done that, I can play my multi-track and I've got control of the outputs here as well. If you wanted to have any signal coming out of aux channels as well, you can do that. So let me just swap this back over to my aux output number one. 
And this is where you would have to come back to the Xair Edit software and then So we can do it the same way. We can come up to our output. This time, oops, I'm sorry, wrong page. We want to go to routing. And then this time we're going to go to aux outputs. Let me just kill that for a second. And you can see we've got all our input channels available along the top as well as our effects returns and here's our buses so you can see bus one is currently attached to aux one aux two is bus two and so on what we want to do is tell our bus one in this case to look at aux input left and just for the sake of this demonstration i'll set aux two to be the right side of that so now that we've done that if i hit this And we come back over here. If we select our bus fader, bring this up and now bring this up. Oops, bring this up. That's how much signal I'm sending to bus one. And now I have to come back here and raise this fader. And now you can hear it getting louder in one speaker. So that's the one I've got connected to the aux. Again, if you don't want that hassle, you can make it work without having to control it here. What you wanna do in this case, is on this first aux, you wanna change post fader to be pre fader. Now that I've done that, you probably heard my other speaker come to life. So now my control for my main outputs as well as my aux are all controlled inside Logic. So any aux output that you want to have control of like that, you would set it the same way here in the software. Change it to pre-fader and make the actual output routing part of the return channel, which is your aux in channel. If you do want it stereo like this, you can actually link your buses. So if I come out here and now I go to input, oops, sorry, let's go back, not input, to click it here. So you want to choose bus and then choose the channel and then you can do a stereo link. So now that I've done that, I'm going to choose yes. Now my bus one and bus two are linked. So my bus one is the left side and my bus two is the right side. So if you had another set of stereo speakers that you wanted to send this out, in addition to your main left, right, you could link them together and now they are controlled completely from inside Logic. Some other interesting things to note with this. Let's say you wanna bring it back on channels that aren't 17, 18. So let's jump over to Logic Pro and let's change our output from 17, 18 to 15, 16. Then let's go back over here. So, oops, one second, let me turn the volume up here. So we've got signal going out, but we're not hearing it obviously. So when we come back over here, we can see that the signals disappeared from 1718. So what do we do? So let's go into the channel and here under the input, you can actually change where you're pulling the signal from. Right now it's set to 1718. So let's change it to 1516. So now we can see we've got signal back, but it's not outputting. And that's because we need to go back out to our main page, go into routing and under the main outputs, Let's change this to 1516. So there you go. That's how you set up your Behringer XR18 with your iPad with Logic Pro so that you can do multi-track recording wherever you are with a really small portable package. I hope this was interesting, entertaining, educational. If it was any of those three things, please like, share, subscribe, consider joining the channel on Patreon or just joining the channel down below right here on YouTube. And if you just like things that we've done in this video or any other video and you just want to throw a little gift our way, there's also super thanks down below. Any of those things help the channel in a really huge way. So thanks in advance. And until we see you next time, thanks for watching here on Cookies. Bye everybody.